Opting for a manual transmission vehicle provides a vastly different driving experience than that of its automatic counterparts. Some may even consider driving a manual to be a test of a real driver. However, the way you drive a manual car not only significantly affects its lifespan, but yours as well. And there are several fatal mistakes that should be avoided when operating a manual transmission car. From lazy shifting maneuvers, destructive car modifications, and even poor driving skills. There are countless ways that you could unintentionally obliterate your manual transmission. So here are 7 things that you should never do in a manual transmission car. Never rest your foot on the clutch pedal. Some drivers are inclined to drive with their foot resting on the clutch pedal. Let's put this in the simplest terms possible. Your clutch is not a resting place for your foot, even though you think there's no pressure being applied. There most certainly is, and it's one of the worst mistakes that you can make while driving a manual transmission car. When you rest your foot on the clutch pedal, your foot forces the clutch pedal down, and then causes it to take up slack. This in turn causes the clutch friction disc to slip, creating heat and ultimately wearing out your clutch. Resting your foot on the clutch pedal also causes the clutch release bearing to be in contact with the clutch cover creating more friction when there doesn't need to be. Over time this will lead to ear piercing noises and complete failure of your clutch, which is an extremely expensive repair. So what does all this mean? I'll tell you what it does, a hefty bill when you eventually need to replace your clutch. Not only does this cause the clutch to wear out prematurely, it also reduces fuel efficiency costing you thousands of dollars at the pump. Riding the clutch will often immensely shorten its life, and it's a dangerous habit to have. The telltale sign that you're causing harm to the clutch is a distinctive burning smell coming from the clutch plates as they slip on the gearbox shaft. If you do notice this smell, adjust your footing accordingly. Never brake without engaging the clutch. Usually as you brake and decelerate, the engine's RPM will decrease with the car, and if it gets too low, the car will stall. Hence, it's important to engage the clutch before this happens. So why does a manual transmission car stall? Stalling a car is most common in manual cars, and it's due to the nature of how the manual car works. When the clutch is engaged, i.e. you're in gear and your foot is off the clutch, to disconnect the engine with the transmission. Once the engine and transmission are connected, they must have the same RPM or revelations per minute, which is determined by what gear you're in. If the car begins to slow but you don't change down to a lower gear, the engine begins to struggle, which is when you experience a bucking sensation as the engine begins to stall. Gently press the brake pedal to begin slowing your car, then depress the clutch pedal to disengage the clutch, unless you're in first gear, in which case to press the clutch followed by the brake. Never leave your car in neutral when parked. When driving a car with an automatic transmission, you always put the car in park when you're not driving it. However, in a manual transmission, putting it in first gear or reverse when the car is facing downhill is just like putting the car in park. It's a typical habit to leave the car in neutral and to use the emergency brake. While you should always use the emergency brake, it's possible that it can fail at some point, and your car will end up rolling. To prevent this, leave the car in first or reverse gear. It could save you a lot of heartbreak and money. Never grind the gears. Grinding gears in a manual transmission car is an unpleasant sound and experience for sure. It never feels good when you're shifting gears and you hear and usually feel that awful grinding noise. Newsflash, it's not good for the transmission, and mainly the gears themselves. This typically occurs when manual drivers are either coasting in neutral and trying to put the car into gear without first disengaging the clutch, engaging the clutch halfway into gear, or try to shift without disengaging the clutch when the revs aren't matched. Anyone who's driven a manual transmission vehicle would probably grind the gears when shifting every once in a while, which is okay, sometimes. However, if you do it all the time and really push your vehicle hard with aggressive shifting, carrying heavy loads or crazy driving, bad things will eventually happen, and it's the perfect recipe for causing clutch and transmission damage. Never leave your car in gear at a red light. Admit it, if you're stopped at traffic lights, do you wait with your clutch down, first gear engaged, and your foot on the brake, even though you're told by your driver instructor that it's a cardinal sin, as well as wearing out your leg muscles, you're also putting needless strain on the clutch. When you keep your car in gear while well stopped, you're keeping the bearings against the diaphragm and springs, similar to riding the clutch. Your car's clutch is designed to disengage and re-engage quickly, not to be constantly disengaged. It's much better to put your car in neutral and apply the handbrake to keep it stationary. When you put your car in neutral, and not have it in gear at a light, the clutch is spared unnecessary wear and tear. Never release the clutch too soon. 
Ideally, you'll want your car to ride as smoothly as possible. Releasing the clutch too early will make your vehicle jerk, while putting excessive pressure on the engine and transmission. This overheats the clutch, which can do serious damage over time. This is a common problem with first-time manual drivers. With regular driving, however, finding the biting point of your car's clutch becomes second nature, and you'll be able to control the car without stalling or jerking it, most of the time anyway, as even the best of us can get it wrong sometimes. Never floor your vehicle when engine revs are low. If, for instance, you're traveling at 40 miles per hour in fifth gear, it's not a good idea to suddenly start flooring the accelerator pedal. When you do this, you're sending your vehicle mixed messages. At low RPMs, your car thinks it should be sitting back and relaxing, whereas your foot is telling it to work really hard. This is what's called lugging the engine. This causes the engine undue stress, which will eventually take a toll on its health. If you need a build up speed, you're better off gently applying the accelerator pedal or shifting down the gears before putting your foot down. You can even skip a couple of gears if need be. As long as you rev match, a technique to prevent shock through the transmission when you're gearing down. Unless you're driving a car for the first time, you should have developed a natural feel for which gear matches certain speeds and RPMs. Bottom line, don't lug the engine. It will cause major problems for you in the long run. Never use the clutch to hold your car on a hill. If you have to stop behind traffic while going up on a hill, you'll need to make sure that your car doesn't start rolling backwards. Many drivers will do this by holding onto the clutch biting point to keep themselves steady on the incline. But by doing this, you're burning up the friction material on your clutch disc, as the clutch will be spinning at one speed, while the engine's pressure plate is moving at another. What's more, you could also find yourself rolling back into somebody behind you if you don't find the biting point in time. Apply the handbrake to keep your car still until it's time to move off. These days, many manual cars come with heel hold assistance technology. This will hold the car stationary for a couple of seconds after the brake is released, giving you time to move your foot to the accelerator without the car rolling back. Never use an incorrect gear when gaining speed. The higher gear of your manual car lets you cruise at a higher speed, at a low engine RPM, and thereby saving you fuel. However, to gain speed, you'll need to go through the gears progressively to prevent the engine from undue strain. You may strain the engine in two ways. First, it might be using a lower gear at a higher car speed causing the engine to redline. It's better to progress in a higher gear before reaching the redline, or when the gear indicator tells you to do so. You may also strain the engine if while driving in a higher gear, you floor the throttle to gain speed. Due to the gearing disadvantage, it would not only take you a long time to reach a higher speed, but it would also put the engine under a lot of strain. It's better to drop a gear than to floor the throttle and shift into a higher gear for cruising. So to sum it all up, you should always be driving in the correct gear. Using the clutch and brake in the winter. In the winter, you shouldn't push the clutch pedal together with the brake pedal. In this case, the wheels can get blocked and the car will be put into a drift. And this is something that you definitely want to avoid. Never slip your clutch. Slipping your clutch is one of the fastest ways to completely destroy your manual transmission. Clutch slipping is a term for what manual drivers do when they slowly lift their foot off the pedal to engage the clutch, but don't fully engage it, and they leave it hovering in a weird gray area. You might do this while easing your way into gear. You also might do this while stopped on a hill, so when you restart your car, you don't roll back. You might do this inadvertently while shifting into higher gears, but whenever you do it, it will completely destroy your clutch. Even if some clutch slipping, as minimal as you can stand it, is necessary. Like when you're starting in first gear from a stop. The reason? When you clutch slip, everything heats up, and all that heat on your clutch can fry it. If you do it for too long, you can completely destroy your clutch in the space of a few hours. Resting your hand on the gear stick. Many people have the habit of resting their hand on the gear stick while driving. This shouldn't be done for several reasons. The most obvious is that you need both hands to steer. Another harmful effect is that such small yet constant pressure on the gearbox turns it into kind of a cocktail shaker, displacing synchronizers and gears. This in turn leads to problems with shifting. Whether you own an automatic or manual car, a transmission that's not working correctly can cause serious problems both under the hood and out on the road. Furthermore, transmissions are very complex and have many moving parts, so this bad habit can easily cost you $10,000 or more in transmission repairs. Under any and all circumstances, never coast in neutral. You might think this is going to save you some gas, and this somewhat makes sense. You're driving downhill, so why not let gravity take over by putting the car in neutral? But in reality, it's the opposite. Today's modern cars are designed in such a way that they save fuel even if the gear is in drive. They simply cut the fuel supply when going downhill. Secondly, and most importantly, putting your car in neutral while driving downhill actually puts you in danger. It reduces your ability to control the vehicle, and we're sure that's the last thing that you want. When going downhill in neutral, you'll only be able to slow down and not 
speed up during an emergency maneuver, but the problems don't stop there. Doing this also cuts the car's oil supply, so the transmission doesn't get the proper lubrication for smooth operation. This results in significant wear and damage, which can cost you an arm and a leg. Furthermore, your car's engine runs at its lowest RPM, and the oil pump works the slowest when you move in neutral. As a result, the engine doesn't cool down as well as it should, and could actually fail due to overheating. Well guys, those are things you should never do in a manual transmission car. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like what you see at the channel, subscribe and put post notifications on. You could also follow the channel on Instagram at Modern Muscle YT. Also, if you guys like the channel, want to support it more, want exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash modern muscle and be a patron. I'm Jeff from Modern Muscle, and I'll see you next time.